Okay, so we're going to start talking about the cell cycle and cell reproduction here. So this is the beginning lecture of our genetics unit. So what I want everybody to think about is in order for humans and animals and plants and lots of organisms to be here, we started at the time of an egg and a sperm getting together to form a structure called a zygote. So the zygote is the combination of one egg and one sperm. Half of our genetic material comes from the egg, half of it comes from the sperm. Now, as a human being, we inherited 23 chromosomes from each structure. 23 from the egg, 23 from the sperm, came together, produces a zygote, 46 chromosomes, full complement of genetic material. If you inherited extra, that leads into issues, things like Down syndrome, or what we call trisomy. If you didn't get enough, odds are you wouldn't be here, because then your body would not have known how to go through the cell cycle correctly and make more copies of itself. So the zygote forms when the sperm fertilizes the egg. After about three hours, there's a nucleus. That's that kind of reddish structure. Let me get the ink pen here. So this structure right here is the beginning of the nucleus. Inside of it will be all of our chromosomes. Now at this point the chromosomes just look like a big pile of spaghetti noodles. Just threads throughout the entire nucleus here. But collectively there will be the amount of DNA equal to 46 chromosomes in that nucleus of a three-hour zygote. Your genetic code is set. That's what you have. That's what you're going to have the rest of your life. Now, little things can change it. Mutations can occur throughout the course of our lives, but the code is the code. Here's your instruction book on how to build your body, how to express your traits, how to do all these things that genetics will dictate. But the first thing it's going to do is this cell, the zygote, is going to jump into a thing called the cell cycle. Now, a cell cycle is a circle. Goes in this big circle. And at the end of the circle, you have two cells. Generally, it takes about 24 hours for a cell to go through the cycle once. All right, so if we're talking about skin, hair, muscle, general body cells, about 24 hours to go through that cycle, and at the end you have two cells. 24 hours later you have four. 24 hours later you have eight. And it just keeps doubling and doubling and doubling. Now, on average, a cell will go through the cycle 50 times, and then that cell dies. But it's left behind 50 copies of itself. And the goal is, during the cell cycle, to create an identical replica of your cell. So when you cut your hand or cut your face shaving, oh, I, I cut myself, those skin cells go through the cycle. 24 hours later, there are two of them. 24 hours later, four, eight, 16, so on. That's the healing process. The growing process. We started as a zygote. We turned into an embryo. We developed into a fetus. Then we developed into this little baby and then a toddler and growing throughout our entire lives. That's because of the cell cycle. Our hair gets longer. Our muscles grow. Our bones heal and repair. These are all things the cell cycle does for our body. Growth, healing, repair, general maintenance, etc. And the goal is, every time a cell goes through the cycle, it produces an identical copy of itself. So when a muscle cell goes through the cycle, there's two muscle cells at the end. Skin cells, there's two skin cells. Hair cells, two hair cells, and so on and so on and so on. So what we're going to do is look at how a cell goes through the cycle. And what's the normal process? But then we'll start talking about well, what happens when things go bad. And that's 
an issue we talk about later, we call that cancer. All right, so our DNA is sitting inside the nucleus. When it's in the nucleus, during most of the cell cycle, it's in what we call the chromatin form. We're going to call this the big stringy mess. Think about it like spaghetti noodles. Okay, so it's a big pile of mess. We have approximately six feet of DNA sitting inside of our nucleus. All right, now the DNA has to get organized. It has to get arranged. It has to get condensed into these little things we're looking at here called chromosomes. So chromosomes are the little X's. Chromatids are half of the X. Right? So during the cell cycle, part of the process is to take the DNA, organize it, and then rip it in half and make sure you got half going to each side of the cell so that way each new cell has the same information and only half of the original DNA. All right, so again, when we're looking at DNA during most of the cell's life, it is in the chromatin oh, form. Okay, so this stringy stuff here, this is chromatin. Now looking at this under a microscope, it just looks like this black spot because it's all just mixed up and look, again, it looks like a big pile of string or spaghetti noodles. You're not able to really identify and recognize specific pieces of it because it's all just piled up on top of itself. Now, as that cell begins the cell cycle, it's going to go through what we call interphase, which takes probably 16 to 18 hours. And then it goes into what we call mitosis. And this is what most people are familiar with. Like, oh, it's cells going through mitosis. Mitosis is simply the physical ripping apart of the cell and the DNA. And then it goes back to interphase. So we're going to explore mitosis here and take a look at what happens during mitosis and the events that will occur during the process of mitosis, the stages within mitosis. The key or the main thing I want you guys to follow is what does a DNA look like during the stages of mitosis? Focus on the DNA. All right, that's the big thing. There's always, well, this is, you know, is it early prophase or late prophase or is it late prophase or early metaphase? I'm not worried about those kind of gray areas, the transitions from one phase to the next. I want you to know key features of a distinct prophase. How do we distinctly know it's in metaphase? Distinctly know it's in anaphase. Not the gray area where it could be either or, but dead center prophase. How do you know when the cell's dead center metaphase, dead center of anaphase, dead center of telophase? Because then keep in mind, these phases are continuous. It may take an hour and a half, two hours for prophase. If you catch it early or you catch it late, how do you know it's really in that phase? All right, so let's take a look at the first one. So right now the cell's sitting in interphase. Let me add to this. So the DNA is in the chromatin form during interphase. Now as it goes from interphase, it then progresses its way into prophase. Okay, so prophase is the first part of mitosis. So the cell's starting to get, it's moving into this, let's rip ourselves apart process. Key things that are gonna happen here. The DNA is going to, let me redo this. The DNA will condense into into chromosomes. 
All right, that's the big thing. Your DNA gets organized. So instead of that big stringy spaghetti noodle thing, we now start to see these distinct little X-like structures. These are chromosomes. So this half right here is called a chromatid. Put two chromatids together, and we call it a chromosome. So you're going to see chromosomes during prophase. Pro is first. Chromosomes appear. Other things that will start to show up, these little things called centrioles. If you remember back to the cell structure lecture, we talked about little microtubules and the unique animal feature, centrioles. Centrioles act as an anchor up here. They're going to anchor these little fibers that are coming off of them here called spindle fibers. So we will see two anchors. They both appear during prophase while the DNA is condensing and just basically getting organized and wrapped up into these chromosomes. Okay, So prophase might take an hour, hour and a half, maybe close to two hours during the course of the cell's day. Looking at an animal cell, there you go. There's your animal cell. So the outer cell membrane here forms the border of the cell. Here's the nuclear envelope. But the nuclear envelope is actually going to start to dissolve and disintegrate. And then these little stringy things in here, what look like little lines, kind of like little X's, those are the chromosomes that are forming. Okay, so this is all going on during prophase. Now from prophase, the cell moves its way into metaphase. Okay, so metaphase is the second phase of mitosis. DNA is in the chromosome form. Okay, so we're going to call them chromosomes. So here's our little chromosomes. Now the key with metaphase, all the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. So remember those centrioles? There's your anchor. There's the other anchor. Got one up here. And those spindle fibers, well, those spindle fibers are little ropes or cables. These are little protein structures that attach to the chromosomes, drag them into a line, and put them across the center of the cell. So I get everything lined up. That's what we're going to see during metaphase. All that is part of the metaphase process or the metaphase aspect. Now, this might take an hour two hours. Again, it's not a lot of time, but they're kind of basically just jockeying the chromosomes into position and lining them up. So here's our metaphase during the animal cell cycle. So again, our animal cell, there's no nucleus. Here's our membrane. Nucleus is gone. Nuclear envelope's gone. This thing called the aster, that's the same as the centriel. So those little anchors up there. And then the spindle fibers would be attached to the coming off of there. Okay, so aster is the same thing as a centriole. But there's your chromosomes across the middle of the cell. Right there. Bang. Okay, so now we got everything lined up. Let's go into anaphase. Oh, anaphase is the third phase of mitosis. Now, the key here is DNA is going to be ripped apart. So you rip the DNA apart, and you're going to form chromatids. Half of a chromosome is a chromatid. So some things will call them daughter chromosomes. I prefer calling them chromatids. 
So we'll get back into this in our next lecture, talk more about anaphase and then telophase.